Hello. Second video about the Quartz tool in the brand new Contact 8. I had a little more time to uh, look into this and some of you asked uh, what else is there. And uh, here we go. So let's look into the advanced mode. Uh, if you don't see the keyboard here from the Quartz tool, go over here because right now the strings are selected. That's why you see the full range of the strings. So go back up here, click on tools and you see the keyboard has changed. Now, if I switch around between the simple mode, you see our seven keys in the three octaves. You know, we just trigger the white keys only. If you click on advanced, now we have a chord selector, which is in color and it's all the way on the bottom. So this will be for me down here. And you can, you can actually move it around. If you don't like it at C0, again, you can move it to minus one, see how it moves, depending on your layout of your keyboard. Uh, the playable range is in green. So anything you can play here, notes in those three octaves, if you need more, you can also, as you can see, increase it or reduce it. And here what happens is quite fascinating. So with the bottom controller here, you change the keys to your chords. It's still the same chords, the ones you used before. This is our C11, right? C sharp 11, excuse me. But now I can play them chromatically. And like our second chord, which was uh, the, um, the minor chord, right? Let's take a look. The second chord was just a minor chord. Yes, correct. Yep. So let's go back here and let's switch here. I, I hit the D, I'm now on the minor chord. So if you need that kind of, you know, a writing, or you want to experiment with those, you know, moving chords, or you have a slower number that, you know, you're just shifting chords around, you can get very creative here and try things out and not being a professional pianist. I mean, that's the idea. Of course, if you play piano, you can play certain things, but even that, that's gonna be really hard to actually play on the keyboard, but you can do this in an orchestra with like a couple of woodwinds, right? You can have those runs. And uh, John Williams has done quite a lot of moving triads and things like that in his uh, great compositions. So this is a cool thing. If you want to experiment with the advanced mode, just click on the, uh, the cogwheel here and then switch over to advanced and uh, have some fun by playing uh, your chords and select them down here in the selector. So that's pretty much it. And of course, one other thing I noticed there has been this uh, menu line combined, which is actually now a combined, uh, it's like a multi. It combines a tool plus a instrument, an instrument. If I double click this now, it's going to load the Conflux, uh, you know, a synthesizer plus the Quartz tool, right? So that's why they call it combined. And you can save them, they're like multis pretty much. And you can make your own combination uh, of your tools plus your instruments. And there can be more, you know, you can add as many as you want. It doesn't need to be just one. It depends what you're doing. What they said in the manual, which I first didn't realize, the rings you see actually in here represent the density of your chord. So a chord like this, you know, has less overtones than the ones with more rings. Let me demonstrate this. You can record your own chords, which I think is pretty cool. So if you don't like this particular sequence, what you do is you select your bass note, which would be a C, you know, and you click the record button and I can, let's say I hit a C major chord. You see how the three rings have changed, right? If I do a C7 chord, I'm getting one more ring. If I'm doing a C7-9, it added one more. If I do the the 11, you know, so we get, so you can see if I undo the record button, I have a C sharp, you know, uh, 11, C with a sharp 11, C7 sharp 11 in there. So, and it shows you that this is a way, way different chord than this one, which is just a D with a five. If I click on this one and record just one note, see, it's only one note or the fifth. So let's leave it like that. So complex chord, simple chord. 
So you can actually program your own chords as you see fit. And like in the uh, phrases tool, you can grab the little handle here and drag them over into your sequencer. And then you have the chord right there, right? But if you're not a great keyboard player, you can actually experiment by, for instance, you know, writing a... And then you just play with two fingers and uh, uh, record something in there because, you know, everything can be recorded in your DAW. Right, so, and then you have it. If you want to experiment, right, with, with something. And so anyhow, thanks for watching the second video. And uh, the next time I'm going to look at the leap, the loops and the one shots. Bye. Mm -hmm.